Welcome to the Birds and the Bees podcast. This is Braxton Dutson. That's the key. People aren't talking about it. Everybody needs to know that porn is not a documentary. It's not like if we don't talk to kids about sex and sexuality, they're not going to hear about it. They're just not going to hear about it from us. They have tons of questions. They just don't know how to ask them. All you have to do is be one chapter ahead. You don't have to know everything. Mm. Just one chapter ahead of wherever your child is. Thank you for listening to Birds of Bees podcast episode 19. This is a really cool episode with Jesse Shepard, LCSW. She uh, she owns Blue Clover Therapy and um, also does a lot of blogging. And I, I read one of her blogs about snowplow parenting, and I had to have her on the on the show again to talk about what snowplow parenting is and the different traits that snowplow parents dis- show and the different changes that. Uh, that parents can have to help combat some of these, some of these negative traits that uh, can adversely affect your child. So she comes on. We have a wonderful conversation about these different traits, the different risks to them, as well as uh, some of the vulnerabilities that uh, that parents have and the reasons why we have these traits. So she does a lot of a lot of explaining about that, as well as some of the ways she's seen this shown up even in her own life, and. I think this turned out to be a really great episode, and I hope you en- enjoy it as much as I did recording it with her. As always, we would love to have your comments. Um, specifically, we'd love to get a review from you. Um, if you could take just a second right now, and you're not driving, uh, to head over to iTunes. Tell us what you think about the show, which is going to help get the show out to more parents and more couples that are looking to improve their relationships and improve their sexual health conversations with their kids and each other. You can also find us on facebook.com forward slash birds and bees podcast. Um, Leave us a comment there. Send us a message. Let us know what your thoughts are about this episode. Maybe uh, if a couple of these traits that you are struggling with pop up and what you're doing to, to help negate those those traits uh we'd love to hear what you what you're doing um you can also call us at 435-449-1818 and leave us a voicemail there we are excited to give you the birds and bees podcast episode 19 snowplow parenting with jesse shepherd hope you enjoy the show Welcome back to Birds of the Beast podcast. This is Braxton Dutson, and here I have Jesse, the therapist. Hello. And now, I only know he's Jesse, the therapist. Yeah. Jesse Shepard. Yeah, I got the whole last name. But I think Jesse, the therapist, is super cool. <laughs> it's like the co. I don't know. It's just the. Yeah, like that is your brand. Was, yeah, I guess every time, yeah, I guess every time I think brand. Jesse, I think the therapist. The therapist. I never think Shepherd afterwards. Not well, a hard last name. No, it's not. It's not anything crazy. Well, and um, Banks, um, Jared Banks, uh, one of the Banks. Yeah, from uh, he was on Mix. Oh, uh, Broadway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Banks. Uh-huh. yeah. He actually gave me that because he couldn't remember my last name <laughs> initially. It was like the first one. He was like, you know, Jesse, the therapist. I'm like, all right, I guess. Nice. Let's put that in the website because that works out, but. <laughs> It just kind of stuck. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, it flows quite well. Yeah, that's fine. So Jesse Shepard's here with us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And she was here with us on um, an episode that we did earlier about uh, eating disorders. And we have her back now to talk about snowplow parenting. Mm-hmm. Bum, bum, bum. Dun, dun, dun. If you weren't terrified to parent before, <laughs> welcome back. So how many of you guys have heard about, um, I think the only thing I've heard of is tiger parenting and helicopter parenting. The helicopter one comes up quite frequently. Yes. Yeah. Um, can we, di- I mean, can we put different terms to it or gosh, I'm not even sure. Maybe we'll get into that in just a second. I want <laughs> to, the, that's the main question I have is where all these names are coming from. But, uh, ultimately, I mean, you've been on here before, but, uh, you're the owner of blue clover therapy. Yep. And Cottonwood Heights, Cottonwood Heights, yeah, here in Utah, Salt Lake City, um, and the co-host of Get Yourself Together mm-hmm. with Mister uh, Jackson Carter. Jackson Carter, how's this? You guys are in your second season now, right? We are, yeah. Oh man, I know. It's I think like episode official three now. came out today. Uh, yes, and yeah, haven't heard it yet, yeah. but I'm excited for oh, that good. topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Jackson and I are um, we are kind of opposites, but it seems to work. So yeah, yeah, really well. Cause you're like, Hey, here's what this is going. And I love the, the intro that you guys come up with every time. <laughs> That's it, all Jackson. It, it, <laughs> it plays so well with or a banter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, he likes to kind of make fun of me as a person. <laughs> well, it's just does. my kind of uptight researchy 
mm-hmm. geeky things, and he's very cool. Yeah, well, because so, you pull up all the, I mean, every time we're talking about something, he's like, well, tell me more about this, blah, blah, blah. It starts talking about something. You're like, 45% of blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and you start telling everything. He's like, for real? I have a friend that, and. <laughs> I know. So he's like the real wor- world version. And yes. I'm like, so statistically, you know, like, this is what happens. I think one of my favorites is you guys talking about sex and, um, Oh my heavens. He started talking about his experience with, uh, with coming out and all uh-huh. this other stuff. And oh my, I was rolling. Yes. I was laughing so hard because you were like holding the spaces. He was like left field, right field all around. He just, sometimes I just sit back for a second and just let him run around until he exhausts himself and then yeah. I get back in there. Very much so. And then you like re rein it in and it's not, it's not, uh, anything that's, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's bringing it up. It's all relevant, and he's yeah. super funny. Oh, he's really funny. He's and the you're funny, funny one. with him. I'm not funny. Yeah, you are. No, I'm because not you funny. play with him, but it's almost like you're that solid structure. It's like, yes. Yes. And the, like the one liners that you've got are super funny. <laughs> well, thank you, because I've been told several times I'm not funny. So <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I've come to terms. Um, but yeah, ultimately, that uh, go, go over and check out uh, Get Yourself Together. Yes. Got yeah. a bunch of different smiley faces, sad faces, and all the emotions you can feel um, on their on their main thumbnail. Um, you're a blogger. You're a mom. Yeah. All around rock star. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you have three kids. I have three kids. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we're going to be talking about maybe some of the things that you see as a parent. Oh yes, parenting is fun. And the things that I'm <laughs> scared to death to do as a <laughs> becoming a parent. <laughs> Parenting's scary. Mm-hmm. It's a scary thing. Hardcore. So, yeah. So oh if, if you're like, oh, I got this parenting thing, you are lying <laughs> or either completely clueless because <laughs> it's, I still like my, um, my kids will do something and I'm like, oh, I need to tell an adult. Oh my God. I'm the adult. <laughs> I am the adult. I need to handle this right now. Wait, that's me. I was like, oh no, I'm the, I'm the oldest person in this room right now. <laughs> All right. Let's pretend I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. So holy cow. That's like 75% of parenting. So that's yeah. what it seems like. Yeah. <laughs> So ultimately, we're, we're getting down to this snowplow parenting. I thought that was kind of a... I was reading your blog and I was like, wow, snowplow parenting. That sounds really interesting. And I didn't know if it was just because it was like January and we had snow. <laughs> but it's not. No. And it makes a lot of sense. But as I was researching different things that people come up with parenting, because I've heard of tiger moms and uh, apparently tiger mom is like the one that just comes to fight for everything yeah. that uh, that your child could possibly do. Dolphin moms. I mean, bubble wrap parenting. What is dolphin moms? That... It's I've never really heard funny because because as I was uh, as I'm reading it right now and I'm like oh I put that in the show notes of Dolphin Moms I know I heard it but essentially it was a positive thing oh but like a cheerleader uh, almost I would think that they like yeah and maybe I'm gonna have to pull it up and be like uh, Google what, that business what, yeah what a dolphin because I've never heard of that one well and there was there was even more I only said a couple of or I only put a couple of them down I was like what are these and who's people coming like up co- with them? coining these things for sure yeah for real yeah. and they're all kind of saying some of the same things. I didn't but, uh, coin snowplow parenting, by the way. Oh, that's not you. Okay. That's not me. Do we know who it was or is it just someone? So, so, um, okay. So it's not used in research. Usually helicopter parenting is the term that's used. And so it's kind of an off branch of helicopter parenting. Oh. And it was first, um, used as far back as I could see is, uh, 2013. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't find like who was the main dude that was like yep this is yeah i can't jam. either it just kind of seems like they come out of nowhere so there's there's even a jellyfish parent yeah <laughs> <laughs> just but essentially the dolphin parent are the balance of extremes between um what looks like the tiger parent and um the jellyfish parent Dolphins are the best, so I can see why that would happen. Yeah, I, I get, <laughs> dolphins are the best. Yeah. But it's, they, they're collaborative and have rules and expectations, but they also encourage independence and creativity. Like the dolphin, what? they like- are firm <laughs> and flexible in their community to, nur- to nurture their child's nature. So they're, they're, uh, that's the only thing that we can come up with on what makes a dolphin, a dolphin or what makes a dolphin parent a dolphin. Like, we need to come up with something. You're firm and flexible. <laughs> like... Let's look around the room. Chair parenting. Your chair parenting. Yeah, you've got four parenting. legs. Your Kitten <laughs> parenting. I think the one the one I came up with, uh, or the one I'm thinking of, is the, uh, oh my heavens. Um, Wasn't it the lockdown parent? Yeah. 
I I'm going like to quote too. Lockdown parenting. The parents believe. <laughs> I wrote this down. I was so clever writing this, and now I'm looking at it like, <laughs> oh, this didn't come out anywhere what I thought it was going to. I'm Guys, like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> There's a punchline to it, I promise. Lockdown parenting. The parents believe all is well until the report card comes home and the Google history is checked and then the house goes into lockdown. No internet, no nothing. And then two or three weeks later, all of a sudden, everything's back to good. And yep. it's fine. It then cool. pornography pops up and it's like, everybody Ooh. freeze. <laughs> and then everyone hits the deck and then we're like in lockdown for a little bit and then everything's back to okay again. I feel like this is legitimate. Like you could totally write should a Should I full, coin this? You totally should. Okay. Okay. I'm going to coin so, it. Do it right now. Yep. Braxton Dutson coined the uh, the term <laughs> lockdown parenting. <laughs> and I was here to witness it and you've recorded it. Like, are you kidding me? Oh man. We're going to put it out there. Yep. So lockdown parenting. Throw it all over the internet. My next blog. <laughs> So that's that's what I'm coming up with. So cool. Essentially, now we're going to talk about snowplow parenting. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, so what are some of the steps that, uh, that or some of the th- things that you see a snowplow parent have? Um, so first do? off, terrible boundaries. Terrible boundaries. Terrible and Just the worst. Mm-hmm. Um, these, are, these are the parents that want to be friends and uh, don't really hold them to what they need to do. Uh, there's no rules in the house. Everybody just kind of does whatever. Um, they can, you know, talk to whoever they want. They can be just dis- disrespectful. I mean, it's, it, it's just, the boundaries are just insane. It mm-hmm. just doesn't make any sense. Um, we, we also want to look at, um, the idea that parents kind of take away obstacles oh. and, and try to, so that's where the snow plow parenting part so of it is. So it's clearing the way for their kids. Right. Okay. Making sure that they succeed and everything is good and everybody gets a trophy and it's mm-hmm. all the whole, that whole bit, right? Um, cause I grew up in the generation where everybody got a trophy <laughs> Me <too>. and, <laughs> I <know. laughs> and I don't have any of those trophies now and they weren't really meaningful to me cause it was just like, yay, I participated in this. Great. I was last place literally. Mm-hmm. And you remember that too. Yeah. I remember that I was last place and I got a trophy. <laughs> like, this is not how this works. <laughs> Why is everybody does this? Um, so removing all obstacles obviously has some serious issues along mm-hmm. with the terrible boundaries. Um, do you just want me to go through like this? Yeah, let's, let's kind of go through steps and we'll, we'll talk about it. And- I love it. Okay. So, um, next thing down the line is not giving them any decisions or, um, not allowing them to make decisions. Mm-hmm. So, um, this can be seen as a control move. Um, but a child, even a very young child can make decisions. It doesn't mean that you like, just let them pick out whatever drink they want or soda or whatever. Uh You can be like, would you like orange juice or apple juice? That's a decision. Yeah. Right. So, so letting them have that and then, um, having them live with whatever decision they made. And that's a lifelong skill. Like the natural consequences, the natural consequences. Like if I choose a certain car, I'm going to have certain things that go along with that car and mm-hmm. I can't just turn it in. Yeah. So it's, it's setting them up in a good way where they have to live with their decisions. Um, no accountability that goes along with the terrible boundaries where mm-hmm. they have chores, but they don't really need to do chores. And, you know, it's more of, um, there's no consequences, but you might yell at them. Gotcha. So you guys but, never do this. You guys never see, you never clean up your room. I can't believe that you're not doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, there and there might not even be a consequence to it. They're just frustration and like it explodes. The kid mm-hmm. endures it, and then we go back to what life yeah, is like. Because they don't need to change anything. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't really matter. Because mom just yelled, but whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, also, a, a unique piece of snowplow parenting is um, entitlement. Ooh. Yeah. So um, believing that your kid deserves more or better than other people's kids. Mm-hmm. Um, which is just a silly thing. And, you, and you'll go to, to fights about it. Like you'll, you'll call up teachers and, and, and we see this a lot more now. Um, and this generation, you know, growing up now where parents will tell a teacher that they're incompetent or una- like, this is a ridiculous assignment or they will, they will do that. That, that wow. respect level has, has, um, I don't want to say eliminated cause I don't think completely, but, um, it's different, but they'll tell them my child's not doing this assignment because it's ridiculous. And how does this have anything to do with anything? Or you should have given my child 
the first place. Like obviously the science project, everyone else's was bogus, but my child, right. Cynthia did it the best. Right. She's, she's got things under control. Well, or like sports, sports is an excellent way oh to get some goodness. really awesome parenting examples to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, where like, well, you're not playing my kid enough and my kid practices every single day and they do this and that and this and that. And that's why you should play them more than this other kid. Mm-hmm. Like the, this entitlement piece not only comes along with you think your kid is great because they, all parents think their kids are great, right? Yeah. But it goes along with my kid is is better than another kid, mm-hmm. and other kids may even be named, like oh. like <laughs> Tommy is way better than Cynthia, <laughs> so she's gonna win this, you know, science fair or whatever. So mm-hmm. yeah, so it's kind of a unique situation that way. Um, I definitely saw it as a so I ref little league. Um, mm-hmm. Oh goodness. <laughs> oh my, it was, it was, I did not know. It was like $10 a game and I was like raking it in as a sixth or no, I, I was been like an eighth grader or something. And holy cow, I did not, I was never prepared for parents to run up beside me and just tear me up for a fourth grade little league flag football game. Yeah. I was like, the kid ran, he just ran, like the flag's off, I just know to call it down. He wasn't down. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm only here for $10. Yes. <laughs> It was horrible, yeah. but yeah, yeah the, it, it brought out, it brought out the parents. It yes. was crazy. Yeah. You see, you see someone's true colors in those scenarios mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. The kids are out there picking their nose, not really caring. I and know. the parents are like, go team. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, Seriously? Does your kid even want to be here? Uh-huh. Yeah. But I'm ha- glad you're having a good time, dad. Cause <laughs> seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so like we said before, helicopter parenting, um, Snowplow parenting came from helicopter parenting. It's okay. kind of developed out of it. So uh, one of those pieces is um, low to no social skills. Okay. And and there's actually a um, monitoring and and limiting social interactions, uh-huh. or making sure that all social interactions are positive. Oh wow. Yeah. So making sure you're only hanging out with good kids and making sure that there's no conflict. And if there's conflict, you rescue and. So there's, you're, you're not actually developing those regular social skills that you need as an adult. Uh And you can see that, um, lacking significantly in how people communicate now, even like we, we spend a lot of time communicating, um, emails and, you know, text messages and whatever, where we're not actually having conversations. Mm -hmm. Um, and so this is a very specific piece of this where social skills are completely lacking. Okay. So the kid is develop is showing that they don't have very many social skills because everything is given to them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, with that piece, um, we're, we're looking at parenting and we don't want everybody to feel bad (laughs) about their parenting style necessarily. Everybody can improve. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's really my core belief that there's always hope. There's no matter what you did, as long as everybody's willing to figure out what to do and, and, move in a positive direction Mm -hmm. to make those changes. Right. Yeah. So like, like looking at these, are these, any of these that you think you might be at risk of demonstrating? Hmm. I, again, cause I don't have kids. I am really, I think as I look at it, I start to think like, Hmm, the, uh, it's not the boundaries. I don't think, well, no, actually having a little girl, Mm -hmm. there's a part of me that's like, how in the heavens do you, say no to a little girl that's just so cute it's like dad like, yes to anything yeah it's like, what oh you want a pony yeah you're yeah welcome. of course yeah, you can like, don't tell mom don't tell me. It's like, she will not agree with this pony idea um i'll say i see I, I see that so you'd have to make a conscious effort to yeah make sure to hold her to, so, to be like yeah pony no no ponies mm-hmm. no yeah ice cream for dinner sounds amazing yeah like, no <laughs> No. See some okay. carrots and then some ice. And then we're gonna figure something out. But I see. I mean, I don't know. Going on vacations. Whenever I see like the, it is in my mind. I've got this little three year old or four year old girl that is just asking me for something, and they're just cute, and they've got like Every, yeah. a ponytail, and they're just like, oh my goodness, just cute. And I'm like, I don't know how to say no. And then maybe with the guys, it's like, no, quit that. Yes, stop it. <laughs> stop it. Come here, wrestle. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Well, that's a good point. See, and well, and and that's just it is uh, noting kind of what you're kind of nervous about. Mm-hmm. Be like, oh yeah, I'm not going to hold her to any boundaries. She doesn't have to clean a room ever. Uh-huh. You know, as long as there's pink sparkles everywhere, I'm good. <laughs> you know, like like I have a problem with wanting to soften obstacles. 
because mm-hmm. I really want everybody to be successful and keep self-esteem up and all of those yes. things. So, um, like my kids can tie their shoes. It's, I mean, that's a normal, that's mm-hmm. a good thing to know, right? Yeah. You know, whatevs. But, um, but sometimes my oldest in particular, she'll be like, oh, I don't want to tie my shoes. Will you tie it for me? And do like this little face, this little puppy face. That's, that's, that's it. That's the puppy face. That's the puppy face. Mm-hmm. I would be like, of like, course I'll, I'll tie your shoes. Sure, I'll tie your shoes. It's not a big deal. Instead of being like, no, you need to continue the skill or, you know, like therapist me trying to come up with... And I was like, yeah, I'll tie your shoe. I don't mm-hmm. care. You want some fruit snacks? Yeah, I don't care. Let's yeah, just, let's just here's your fruit snacks. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. You just, well, I love you. <laughs> like, exactly. <laughs> right. So um, we don't want to scare anybody with this idea because you're going to find something that you're doing on this list. Um, and I feel like we're very uh, aware people yeah. of ourselves. Um, and so it's never hopeless. And you're never being a terrible parent as long as you're thinking about how you're parenting. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of figuring out what to do there. Um, But as far as kind of figuring out why we don't want to do these things, Mm -hmm. um, the main thing that I think people lose because we have our, our children... Um, they're little people. They're our little people. Yeah. Right? And they look like us and they're doing, you know, or you adopt them and, you know, they're, you're, you protect them and you take care of them and you make sure they're safe. And there's there's this parental role that goes into it um, where we kind of forget that we are g- growing these little people mm-hmm. to go be fairly competent adults. Yeah. And so we kind of get lost in the trees there and forget that the forest exists. Mm-hmm. Um and so the the biggest piece of that is the little the little decisions or the the little situations that they're put in are going to develop them into people who are resilient. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where letting them fail is a really big piece of it. Um, you you don't learn much from succeeding, mm-hmm. so that's where like I have to like. <laughs> Okay, you know, like I know you did really well there, but I need you to do it multiple times, right? Mm-hmm. You know, um, or thank you for wiping off the counter. Now you have to do that every day. <laughs> like it's <laughs> like these are resiliency skills, um, or sports come into play where they have to learn to lose. They might be really just talented at mm-hmm. w- what's going on. They might be really su- successful. But if they never learn how to lose, I mean, you and I both know as adults, we lose all the time. Yes. <laughs> Life on the is so daily. hard. <laughs> Adulting is hard. Um, and so you need to know how to cope. Mm-hmm. And and that's what we're doing when we're eliminating obstacles and we have terrible boundaries and we're doing all of these snow parent, uh, snowplow parenting things is that we're, we're taking away their ability to learn how to cope with themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so that's, that's one of the things, letting yeah. them fail. Uh, so letting, that, yeah, letting your child fail is being able to develop resiliency, essentially. Mm-hmm. That really sucked. You fell. Yeah. I'm sorry. And good how, fall, though. How we, yeah, you did a great <laughs> job at it. Yeah. <laughs> so now what are we going to do next time? How can we do this differently? I'm mm-hmm. really sorry that you feel horrible about what just happened. Yeah. How can we make this feel a little bit better? And what are we going to do about it now? Right. Yeah. Well, and, and I think just in general as a population... Uh, we don't sit well with uncomfortable feelings. No. We want to rescue and we want to solve and fix and do all these different things where um, sometimes you just need to feel it. Mm-hmm. And it's uncomfortable and it sucks and it's terrible. And letting your kids feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And letting them have the, the whole gamut of, of emotion is really important. Mm-hmm. They should get angry. Like... I know that we want to eliminate their outbursts or like attacking <laughs> a sibling or something. Um, cause that's more social skill development, but, yeah. uh, we want them to, uh, be able to know how they're feeling and know that emotions are mixed and you, you might not know how you feel, or it might be just all over the place mm-hmm. and being able to, uh, know what you're feeling, be present in your body while you're feeling that. And then how to cope with that later on mm-hmm. is really important. Wow. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because if you never experience it, if you're always successful, there's no, I mean, life is just happy. I just do things. Right. It just works out. It just works out. And it doesn't just work out when someone does beat you. Right. Or when there is a disappointment. Well, and, and the scary part about not letting your kids fail is we're seeing an uptick of parents doing like college applications or cal- no college essays way. or homework or all of these different things to make sure that their kid is successful or gets into college or whatever they're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Um, bless, bless my mom's heart. I tried so hard to have her write mine. <laughs> Not necessarily, but as we're talking about this, I'm like, mm-hmm. holy cow, I was horrible at writing. And so I wrote <laughs> something that was just full of run on sentences. Mm-hmm. And she made me sit down next to her and like go through where the commas need to be. Fantastic. And- it was the worst, and I felt so <laughs> horrible about it because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, this is just how I'm going to submit this essay. And my mom mm-hmm. was like, and you're not. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> She's proofreading on. and was like, yeah, and it's time for us to look at uh, maybe where your shortcomings were. But right. it was the worst. It was horrible. Yeah. However, I continued to then, one, realize that my writing was not very good. Okay. But then I was like, well, I needed to work on grammar and continued through college to work on grammar, mm-hmm. where in high school I thought it was quite the – phenomenal writer getting A's in English and my English teacher just didn't really care to dock points. So I didn't really care to do much more than what I was doing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't learn much from that. Not at all. But your mom was sitting down and telling you where to put the, like, <laughs> here's a comma, there's a period. <laughs> yep. Rewrite the sentence. Exactly. Was, was much more educational. Uh huh. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So, so we do need to let them fail. We need them to n- not get into a college and fail assignments and get D's if mm-hmm. that's the case where they actually have to work and be proud of that because that A isn't going to mean anything to them. Like that trophy, my last place trophy, <laughs> <laughs> which actually was like fourth place, but there was only four people. So I was like sitting there going like, what is happening here? Like I, it didn't mean anything to me mm-hmm. and not at all, Nothing. but I got a trophy. Mm-hmm. Like you get to take that home and then throw it away later. I know. It's like, that's, that was terrible. Yep. Um, we kind of went into the decision-making piece where it starts off very little when they're young mm-hmm. and moves into much bigger decisions. Um, well, I'm saying um kind of a lot. What is my problem? <laughs> Calm down, me. It's late in the um, day. <laughs> <laughs> so we have apple juice and orange juice. We want them to do this when they're like two or three, right? Mm-hmm. As we go through into teenagehood, it's going to be like, Drinking or not drinking, having sex, not having sex, or various versions or whatever it is, right? Yeah. And so we want them to be able to understand, uh, first, the gravity of making a decision mm-hmm. that, that is, it is impactful and that you do have to live with those consequences. I think that's the big part. And it's like we're moving into another part of what we were saying where it's like holding them from consequences. Mm-hmm. So making decisions and the natural consequences that come with it. Right. Which is like have sex, don't have sex. Mm-hmm. And the gray that's completely... Involved in that, like what you were saying. Yes. Yeah. Is that like, well, we need to know exactly what all the different uh, possible natural consequences are there. I mean, obviously some of them pregnancy and STDs that we talk about, but Mm -hmm. uh, what about emotional stuff? What if you break up and you're 15 and 16, you've had sex like that can be devastating. Right. How do we deal with that? It's probably better if you aren't quite sure to not have sex and then kind of figure out what that would be. But they get to make that choice versus here's your chastity belt. Yeah. Exactly, because abstinence is so effective, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and 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 we so we want to empower them mm-hmm. and and make it where they can they make their choices and like if they pick the wrong slushy color and get the terrible slushy, oh, they need to yeah. drink that slushy <laughs> and deal with it. Like it, it's just how it is. So that when they if they when and if hopefully your kids don't go to jail, <laughs> but let's say they're going to jail, you don't bail them out. Yeah. Right? And it all stems from the slushy. Yeah, it all (laughs) stems. It's because you went and got them a different colored slushy. So I'm just saying, moms, don't go back. Uh, No, but but really, I mean, these small decisions. (laughs) I'm imagining the mom in the car on the way back where it's like, mom, I didn't get the right color. You're not going to jail. (laughs) (laughs) It just gets this whole thing stemmed up. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it equates to the same thing. Yeah. There's no, absolutely no research in there, but, um, no, no, uh, but I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness. We have pretty good talking points and man, it's hard to hold, <laughs> it's hard to hold tight to, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally. important. It right. is important. So to, well, to give them the natural consequences, <laughs> to allow them to have, uh, their own decisions and recognize that, you know, you can explain those consequences to them as well. Oh, and, and you should. Oh, even should. even very little, they can understand why we don't waste food or why we clean our room or why we need to tub mm-hmm. and shower, why we need to clean our hair. Like, they can understand little things like that. I mean, you, you know, like when you're having the sex talk, mm-hmm. you can have it at different ages with different, uh, you know, verbiage. 
Like yeah. you can, and, and you should, it should, they should understand that their body's their body uh-huh. and people don't, you know, it, it, all of it. And, and there's different versions of the story as you keep, not for story, but different versions of the talk as you go through ages. Yeah. The continual conversation is going to learn and grow with different types of, um, verbiage and different, um, ways that you're referring to it more, mm-hmm. giving some more <laughs> information. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. And their experiences, something might be confusing and mm-hmm. then you can discuss that piece and, and add it to the conversation. And like you said, it should be a continuous mm-hmm. piece of that. Um, and knowing that life is not fair, <laughs> like, I don't know how your life has turned out, but life is not no, fair. No, it's not been that way. Not yeah. in my experience. Right. And so we tend to think that, you know, well, she got more of this and that. And as you're, you know, you have children and in kiddos or a classroom or whatever's going on there, you do kind of want things to be relatively fair and have everybody understand why you don't want to be like, you're my fave. You get five Skittles, you get one Skittle. Like that's, that's not nice. Um, <laughs> no, that'll set them up for therapy later. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it keeps us as business. So uh-huh. That's good. Uh, but, but you do want them to understand that, uh, sometimes certain people get certain things and others don't, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, I think the biggest thing for me, I, I didn't grow up in a, uh, wealthy family. Mm-hmm. And so the biggest shift for me was like, Oh, not everyone lives like this. Mm-hmm. And so being able to kind of be, to explain this to people that it, you know, depending on wealth or situations or items or clothing or whatever it is that things, things are not divvied out. You know, everybody gets five Skittles. Mm -hmm. It, some people get one Skittle and some people get five. Uh, so, so it's important to give your, give your kids an understanding of what life is, is like and Uh and what's going on there without it being, (laughs) you don't need to be too harsh (laughs) on the whole thing. Uh, again, with age, you start to, yeah, within, with some empathy, you know, it's not like that's life, get a helmet, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just being able to say like, yeah. wow, that really sucks. That's a bummer that that happened. And right. I, I've been there before too. And that is disappointing. I imagine you feel really sad, right? Empathy, things along those lines. But you're, yeah. I think the main point is we're not taking that experience away. That yes. Yeah. It's theirs to own. Mm-hmm. So also, uh, we want to give kids along with your, your lockdown parenting, which I think, I think is quite creative. You got to nice. I'm, I'm really going to hold seriously, on to that. Make a, make a, like a image and all that business. I re- yeah. I need to do the lockdown parenting and then the ways around that. Mm-hmm. Cool. Just, yeah. I'll totally. Yeah. Support get me. Behind that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want, we want, uh, kids to have independence mm-hmm. and, and sometimes that's really hard because they're little or they're. We feel like they're incompetent in some way. Mm-hmm. Uh, teenagers, for instance, are kind of what we go to when we're thinking like, I want independence. You don't know me at all. Uh-huh. Uh, kind of a, <laughs> a conversation. We do want to give them independence. We want them to to um, have their freedoms while keeping them safe. Mm-hmm. And safety is the big piece of it there. Uh, but also two-year-olds go through the same thing and five-year-olds and 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds and then 13-year-olds and then every teenage year has a new phase of independence mm-hmm. and just um, uncomfortableness yeah. of this. And and with that independence also comes responsibility. Mm-hmm. So you can't just let your kid be free and run around and do whatever they want because then there's no responsibility with that. Mm-hmm. And you also can't make it where they're responsible for everything, but they don't have any freedoms. Yeah. So, so there's a balance to that where they can get these new responsibilities and they can have more independence and they can, you know, maybe go to the movies with their friends or whatever, you know, you feel like is an okay gauge for them, but you want to do it based on the kiddo and not the age Mm -hmm. because every kid is different, has different experiences and developmentally is different. And so making sure that it is still safe for them. A a 13 year old is not a 13 year old is not a 13 year old. They're all different. Yeah. So making sure that you're engaging with that child is, is very important. Completely. And it it sounds a lot like in those areas or in with those, each of the kids, the vocabulary, I mean, they're, they are small humans and they want to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And if you try and jump to, um, being like understanding, you may have a five-year-old that runs up to you. He's like, mom. Um, and then there's, uh, Tommy, he just, um, 
<laughs> and they're trying so hard and you're like, right. I just watched the whole situation, kid. I totally know what's going on. Being able to allow them that space to to feel like they're, they've are they got responsibility of telling you what had just happened and what their experience was. Yes. Um, just as much as a 13-year-old is going to say it in a certain way um, and that you get to gauge how those are or how that, uh, how your child is experiencing life. Right. Um, I like that, that you say the balance part of it because the balance is never like, okay, we found the balance. Mm -hmm. That balance is ever changing. Oh my goodness. All the time. Yeah. And so so it's not, uh, one, if you feel like, all right, well, you're going to get grounded for this much for these certain things makes parenting sound easier. Again, I'm not, it makes it more black and white, black and white, but, uh, you've got to stay away from that. Right. Well, and, and recognizing their emotions, like my, my three-year-old, I told her to do something, clean up something. And she was like, you're being mean. I'm sad. <laughs> I was like, and my, and my knee jerk reaction was like, no, you're being a turd. I want you to clean this up. Right. But, but she was expressing to me that she was frustrated that she had to do that thing and that she was sad that she, she mm-hmm. felt sad. And, and that's pretty neat that she knows what is going on? Like she doesn't want to do something <laughs> mm-hmm. and that I'm, I, uh, like she is sad because of that. And mm-hmm. so then we got to have a little, you know, three-year-old conversation about that, mm-hmm. uh, which is going to be much different than your 13 year old. being like, I hate you. And you know, <laughs> but it was a, it was a good thing for her to be able to, to express that she was frustrated with me and that I made her sad. Mm-hmm. So yeah. definitely. Yeah. And it sounds like that also comes down to boundaries too. Because like, yes. we're talking about the 13 year olds, like, I hate you and I'm not doing exactly what you say. Mm-hmm. Um, that having those, um, those rules or the, uh, the rules or, um, the follow through, like yes, you, follow when through. you do have rules, like you need to have follow through. Right. Yeah. And, and try to make all consequences as natural as possible. Ooh. Like taking away all of the, you know. Nintendo. What do we kids have now? I don't oh like video heavens. games. You know, Nintendo. Switch. The, the Game Boys. I don't mm-hmm. think anybody has them. The one's got a game. They're like, it's a DS. <laughs> it's a, actually. Actually. Uh, please don't judge my age based on that. But um, I call everything a Nintendo. And I have a lot yeah. of clients who get really angry. They're like, it's an Xbox. It's a PS4. <laughs> oh. Well, and everything is Star Wars to me, too. And that is totally not okay. Not, not okay. for a lot of people. Not for a lot of, you know. <laughs> There's Battlestar Galactica. That's not Star Wars. Nope. But they and, shoot lasers uh, at each other. What's the one with the um, the Wild West one? Oh, my heaven. Oh, my gosh. It's not Serenity. I think that's the name of the show. Destiny? Ship. Nope, that's not Wild West. That's still planets. But Well, because it's planets, but it's like, how, I don't know. We'll look it up. I think it's Destiny. Is it? Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. It's got like coattails, and they're sliding down mountain moons, and... Planet moons. Oh, someone's going to correct us. Someone's going <laughs> to write you on the other end, like, and they're like, "Listen up, that is not what it is." Um, <laughs> anyway, I like that one. Mm-hmm. Apparently, that one, I don't it, know the name they're of it. Like, it is not Star Wars. <laughs> it is not. That one's not Star Wars. Um, yeah, I don't even remember what we we're talking about. But <laughs> <laughs> I think we we're going into just everything's got to be followed up. Oh with, yes, uh, it's got to be explained, and you need to have very clear uh, natural consequences. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then ultimately, I, I, right here, one of the things you said in your blog is that uh, you try and see the global understanding of the situation. Yes. Uh, but yeah. th- w- tell me a little bit about the global understanding. So I, it goes back to that personalization. Mm-hmm. And, and kids obviously personalize. The Kids are egocentric, so they're going to take everything to heart, and they're the ones... They're, they personalize yeah. it all. Yeah. Whereas parents, uh, you should try to stay away from that because it is... And, and I am, I have been in that place too, where you take that, I hate you statement and you take it personally. Mm -hmm. Um, and you need to take a breather and do your little time out and then come back to the situation. But we, we want to understand that there's a growing piece to this, that at some point they're going to be adults. Mm -hmm. And so when they yell, I hate you, or you're so controlling or, or these different statements, it's essentially a cry for independence. They're trying to push and move and grow into a different oh. way. And so being able to kind of understand that that's happening and then trying to figure out how you can kind of uh, assist them in that where it's it's not only independence and freedom, but there's also the responsibility that goes along with that. Gotcha. Because uh, we tend to not think about the responsibility part. We just want mm-hmm. freedom. So this whole Spider-Man mantra. Yeah. The- <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. With great power comes great responsibility. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So we're trying to do that in little tiny steps. And so when they're doing these little things where they're, they're frustrated with us or they feel like we're restricting them too much or whatever those things are, they're looking for independence. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that they do it in a healthy way, safe way. And, um, so, so really it's, it's seeing what is hap- actually happening and not taking it as a personal attack or that, you know, there's being turds and they're going to end up being little jerks when they grow up. Uh-huh. Like it's, it's not that it's, it's, it's a growing process and it's uncomfortable. It is. It's especially when you've got a child that says, I hate you. Yes. Oh, like you ruined my heart. life. Yep. Yeah. Do you have an, I like, is there a way, is there a, a, a I guess not an emotionally reactive, but an okay way to respond to that. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because that seems just like, obviously, in the moment, very different. Each child's going to be different, but right. Anything to that? Well, again, it's it's stepping away. Like mm-hmm. I, I make sure that I step away for a second mm-hmm. and try to realize what is going on. Ah, uh, to curb that emotional reaction of like, oh yeah, oh yeah, hey you too, you little jerk. Look at my body. Look what you did to it. You don't want to go down that r- line. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't go down. Uh, but being able, because because you do love them so freaking much, and so for them to be like, I hate you, is like. Are you kidding me? Do you know how much sacrifices I've done and how much I love you so much? And it turns in this big emotional reaction inside. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you take a moment, cause usually I hate you comes with running into the room or going to their little space or whatever their little safe spot is. Right. Uh-huh. So taking a moment or even saying mom needs a timeout. I just need a timeout right now mm-hmm. and trying to recognize what's going on. Mm-hmm. So is it that they want to walk to school independently? Well, you know, they're in kindergarten. We can't have you walk <laughs> to school by yourself, but maybe I could, you know, walk a few paces behind you or, you know, so you could feel like you have it and make sure you stop at the street and just kind of figuring out what they're looking to have happen. Um, and, and why they're saying those things. Why are they saying that they hate you? Um, do they not feel heard? That's a big piece of it where maybe you told them what to do and they said, you know, I know I had a bad day. I don't want to do it. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to do my homework. I had a bad day. I'm going to go to my room. And they're like, you're like, no, you're going to come down here and do homework. They don't feel heard. And it's this whole piece of that. Uh-huh. So trying to just recognize what's actually going on there and not trying to, not emotionally reacting to it. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Which that makes a lot of sense. Super difficult sometimes. Very. Yeah. I can, I, yeah, I can just imagine that it just pulls on everything. You're like, Hey, that hurt. Yeah, That, that was mean. <laughs> that was, you're being mean and I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> So essentially these, uh, just to kind of overview, cause we've, we've covered a lot of different things. Yep. Um, what, uh, want to just point it out some of the things that, that make up a snowplow parent. So mm-hmm. we've got, um, terrible boundaries. So letting your child do whatever, um, or doing everything to make your child succeed yeah. as well. It's just, there's no boundaries. You're not setting it. Right. Um, you're reducing the obstacles for your child or eliminating them, you know, plowing through all of the, uh, the problems they could be facing or any type of things that's going to make them struggle and grow. Right. Um, and make, not letting them make decisions, no accountability, um, giving them a sense of entitlement. Um, or would, would we say that you're giving them entitlement or like letting them know that they're like, you're entitled to everything. In this well, it, it's both. Oh, is it um, both? so you would have it where the parent is acting in a certain way. Therefore the kid starts to believe and act in that way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you'll have kids telling off teachers. Um, maybe they've seen it similarly done, or maybe they're witnessing it in the home gotcha. where maybe the parent hasn't directly attacked the teacher, but has like at home, like this is stupid homework. You're never going to use this mm-hmm. math is dumb. You know, then of course they're going to start bringing that into like, into um, yeah, into the <clears throat> school or whatever situation it is. Yeah. And then that leads into, again, the, the no social skills where every social skill is a positive one. Mm-hmm. They don't have any way to really interact with their peers or with authority or anything like that. So they, that entitlement ekes over into that too. Right. We, we want them to learn how to deal with conflict mm-hmm. and being a leader or a follower or what that looks like or the in-between or, you know. All this makes for great reality TV. It does. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> All I can think of is every time we're talking about this, I'm like, Jojo from The Dance Moms. Like, oh, my goodness. Wonderful I can't TV. watch that. Can you watch that as a therapist? No. Anybody? What happened mm-hmm. is we were doing, Natalie does, uh, does um, sound, and we were in Idaho, and Jojo came to do her dance for her release of her new music album. Oh. And so we got to deal with Jojo. And I'm saying deal because holy cow, that's what it was. It was like just, uh, yeah, everything. She she deserved everything. It was supposed to be right on this point in time. She treated the girls that were there that were like, oh my gosh, you're like my favorite and you dance so well. It's like, yeah, it's probably because you're like essentially not me. Like oh, it was insane. Wow. I was like, okay, it's all choreographed when it's on reality TV, but I'm watching this happen and I'm watching yeah. her like destroy these girls that are asking for advice. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> And it's the yeah. entitlement. It's never failing. And yeah. I, as I've watched little snippets of what, because uh, that got me curious about JoJo. Mm-hmm. So I watched a little bit of the, the moms and I was like, right. I can't do this. It's mm-hmm. too much drama. But yeah. as we're reading through it, I'm like, this is exactly what we're looking at. Like, there's no boundaries. Mm-hmm. There's no, I mean, it is like, you deserve the world and it doesn't matter who's in front of you. It doesn't matter that this lady that's in charge of the show is saying, you're not on the show. Just push. Just keep going because... Right. She's the obstacle. Right. Well, and and that's just it is there's thinking that your kids can do anything that they want if they work hard. And then mm-hmm. there's like, you can just, you deserve everything. Mm-hmm. You, sh- you should just go get it. And it's like, well, okay. Yeah. There's a bit of like tenacity you want them to yeah. have, like keep going. But there's also a lot of hard work that goes into that. Mm-hmm. And so. if someone says you need to do this better and you didn't make the team that's going to do the rehearsal, which one of the ones I watched was like, yeah, sorry, you don't get to do that. And she's like, um, I, I rehearsed better than any of these girls here. <laughs> I did best. She's like, you messed up on this and this and this. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't. Yeah, so I, I, you can't accept. There was no accepting. Right. Of, I did. And criticism did hurts, but you got to learn how to take it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, essentially the, um, the recap of what, um, a way that you can combat these are different ways to like, if you find yourself in one or two of these, you're like, Oh, I don't know what to do. Um, letting your child fail, letting them make decisions, creating rules and sticking to them, letting the natural consequences come out and point those out, Mm -hmm. um, and help them see the global understanding of what's happening, giving them independence and creating a healthy relationship that, uh, that you giving them quality time and attention, um, and you're able to to allow them to grow and move through this balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, a lot of it comes down to rapport, and it's not friendship. Yeah, friendship is different than rapport. Mm-hmm. It's it's being there and being a support, and being able to help them through life as they go. Totally. Yeah. All these things get me just a tad nervous about being a parent. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I I read so many books. I was terrified, absolutely terrified to be a parent. Mm-hmm. Um. And I think there's a, a piece of that of being aware of best practices because that's, I love best, best practices. <laughs> I love it. Um, and then there's understanding yourself and being very much aware of what's going on because mm-hmm. there's plenty of times I've failed as a parent. And I, I mean, I would love to say that I haven't, but I, I yeah. have, I've failed as a parent, well, of course. And, but it's not the failures necessarily mm-hmm. as long as the kiddo's safe. <laughs> Just yeah. want to point that out. Um, <laughs> make sure they're safe. Um, but it's what you do with that failure. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're teaching your kids. Like to be able to go to your child and say, hey, I lost it there. That was totally inappropriate. I shouldn't have said those things to you. Uh, what can we do here? What, mm-hmm. what, would, what would be helpful for me to help you feel better? Um, I, I spoke out of turn or I was, you know, taking out stress on you or whatever it is. And that is totally not okay. And you should be able to apologize to your kid mm-hmm. and fi- and figure out what's going on. I, I think so. that show, again, that's showing your child what uh, a great way to react. Mm-hmm. And like, hey, mommy does this too. Daddy does this too. Right. But yeah, that does. It sounds like, I mean, this is a big job when it comes to parenting. Right. And <laughs> it's always nice to be able to like couch parent other people. <laughs> yeah. It's like, so you should be doing this. So this is what research says. Yeah, it's and- like, do this. <laughs> As you're yeah. talking to a mom that's just maybe had another baby and has got a four year old, you're like, and this is probably do you what you understand? Do. <laughs> do you understand the sleep deprivation <laughs> that I'm experiencing right now? I know that you don't get a lot of sleep, but you need what's yourself. What my favorite thing is because I because I go to therapy uh-huh. um, because you know every therapist should have a therapist, have a therapist. And every person should have a therapist. Yeah, um, it was it was right after I'd had which kiddo was it? 
I don't know, it was one of my children, but I had a, a little one at home and she's like, what self-care do you do? And I'm like, are you out of your mind? There's no self-care, <laughs> zero. Are you kidding me? I am barely like getting any sleep mm-hmm. and this, and I just kind of lost it. Mm-hmm. So that didn't go super hot. They, yeah. She's they like, did. We had to I'm sorry. learn to apologize that right there. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, that's silliness. Like you got to work with the animal. You're, you yeah. can't you know, be working with a zebra and act like it's a tiger. Yeah. You know, so let's... With what you're working with. Yep. And I think that going with what you're saying there, where we're failing, where we're not having any sleep, and we're working with our independent individual lives, mm-hmm. the reason for this podcast um, and this this episode, what I love so much about your blog um, post on this is that it's all about look at what's going on. Mm-hmm. These are all the things of a snowplow parent. If you hit every single one of those... And you're looking at, and you're listening to this, going, "Huh, I don't see a reason why." Like, it's time to go talk to somebody. Yeah. But the majority of people yeah. that are going to be talking about this are like, "Oh, I probably do that a little bit more than I should." Mm-hmm. And here's kind of the remedies to it, or right. some things that you can work on pushing yourself in that in that place. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you're a bad parent. Nope. Doesn't mean that you know. And maybe we mess up. Sometimes we're going to have these. Sometimes we're going to step in and. Like you're saying, and tie their shoes when they should be tying it themselves. Tie their shoes, <laughs> right? Yeah. But, I mean, it's it's being a parent, and and parenting is hard. And so the very idea that you are considering your parenting style and what you're doing shows that you're a good parent, mm-hmm. because there's thought process in it. There are plenty of parents out there who have never thought about what they're doing parenting mm-hmm. wise. Um, and those guys, I want them to like look inside a little bit yes. and see what's going on. <laughs> but but the idea of you're like, oh, I kind of do that, or oh my gosh, I did that that one time and that was horrible, mm-hmm. shows that you're paying attention to what you're doing parenting wise. And then there's specific things you can do to try to remedy it. So completely, that is that is the piece. There's there's never no hope mm-hmm. if you're willing to to work at it. So. Yeah, and like you're saying, there's never. Um, like there's always time to go back and repair. Mm-hmm. You can always repair just the same as we've talked about the sex talk. Mm-hmm. If you're not talking about it, you can start now. It's never too early to start and it's never too late. Right. Like just do it. Mm-hmm. It just needs to happen. So keep being a parent, keep moving forward. Yep. You got this. You got this. You this got is another tool that you can a, use. Do it. You got it. Yeah. 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 Right on. Well, thank you so much, Jesse Shepard. You. <laughs> you know, Jesse, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Jesse. I really thank appreciate you. it. Uh, you can find Jessie at uh, her blog post, actually, is her blog is jessiethetherapist.com. And this is based off of the forward slash snowplow, comma, or hyphen parenting. Um, and I'll have that up on the uh, the source webpage. Um, but you can find her at jessiethetherapist.com, bluecovertherapy.com, as well as the Get Yourself Together podcast. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll have to do these more later on. This is so much fun. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for listening to Birds and Bees podcast. We'll see you on the next episode. This has been another episode of the Birds and Bees podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions about the show, comments, or questions you would like addressed in another episode, please give us a call at 385-449-1818. Leave your voicemail and your question, or you can also email us at birdsandbeespodcast at gmail.com or visit us online at birdsandbeespodcast.com. <laughs>